Well, today we're in Boston, Massachusetts, in the wonderful United States, and we have three days or three nights of shows here. It's our last night, and I figured since we didn't have to do a load in today and we had a little extra time, uh, we'd do a little rig review, rundown, whatever you want to call it, of our tour rig for the Lewis the Child Here For Now tour. So we'll do a little bit of front of house here, and then we'll go check out some of the stage. Our main attraction out here is uh, the Grand MA2 full size. Uh, it is what is controlling the whole show. Uh, in addition to the MA2 running lighting, uh, we also have a Razor Blade Pro running our visuals and our Madrix uh, lighting server, external lighting control for the pixels of uh, some of the fixtures that I'll show you later on stage. So we have both Madrix and Resolume uh, active and running on two laptops out at front of house uh, during the show. Uh, we're also fed time code for this whole show by Playback Land. Cooper sits over there in the corner of the room during the show and sends me uh, time, con er, uh, time code via SMPTE down our lighting snake and into this distripalizer here, which then splits that signal, sends it to the lighting desk, and sends it to the audio cards of both laptops. So this is the primary laptop. Um, I do have, if you want to come over here, um, we have a backup laptop, which has another audio card connected to it, uh, just to give us redundancy, not only for MA net, uh, but also for the Resolume and Madrix servers. Uh, right now, it's just got capture pulled up on it because I was doing some offline visualization. I do that a lot when the rig is being built. Oftentimes, the console will be one of the first things off the truck. So I'll set this up, set up capture and uh, do some offline programming while they're building the rig. So yeah, as I mentioned, this is a fully time-coded show. Uh, it's my first fully time-coded show that I've really gotten to spend a lot of time with, and uh, I'm really happy with what we've put together here. So now that I've shown you a little bit of front of house, let's go check out what's on the stage. All right, so we're up on deck now. Uh, we'll get a little closer look at the different instruments um, that I picked for this show and talk a little bit about why. Um, so probably the most obvious thing is the big curved LED wall. That's what everybody tends to see. That's what most people's eyes are going to be looking at the whole time. And that was one of the, one of the things that uh, the boys, uh, Robbie and Freddie, approached me about uh, in the very beginning. They didn't give me a whole lot of guidance on what they wanted but one thing that they said they were really interested in having a a curved rear wall now it's not exactly curved it's it's straight segments you know that are you know joined together in a curved look um, but yeah so that's that's the main design element uh, of this show um, and then everything kind of fills in around that so uh, moving on from there uh, it's framed on either side by these uh, Portman hex lines. They come in strips of six. They've got little uh, joints that you can put them in all different shapes and configurations in, but uh, straight lines are good enough for me. Uh, so there's 12 individual cells on each side, giving us a total of 24. Uh, it provides a nice warm frame for the otherwise entirely LED or uh, intensity dis high intensity discharge uh, fixtures. Over on either side of the stage, uh, we're flanked by three towers for a total of six towers on the whole rig. Uh, each tower has a Roby spider, or excuse me, Robe <laughs> spider on the bottom in mode seven. Uh, six elation darts with a Z360 fixtures. And in the middle of every tower, we have a uh, good old classic, well, it's becoming a classic, the JDC1 in uh, 62 channel mode. Uh, I don't use 68 channel mode because sometimes a little extra bit of universes really helps. What's up, Shane? You want to be in the video? No. So, uh, also, on the most upstage of each one of these towers, we've got another set of PTZ cameras, which Scott will talk to you about in his video. Uh, we use those a couple times during some special moments during the show, and uh, they add a nice, nice little touch. Um, it's also really cool that we can remotely control them from front of house. We don't have to have a separate operator. These towers are actually just GT 10 foot sticks that have been flipped upright and put on a huge steel base plate. Um, they roll in nice and easy. Uh, and while we're over here on stage right, we'll go over to Dimmer Beach, check it out for a second. Um, 
to talk a little bit about the network setup, we have an NPU that you'll see nestled in here, but it's actually, uh, it's not really doing anything. Um, <laughs> the reason we, we have an NPU on the order, I originally didn't spec one because we had enough parameters with just our MA2 full size and my MA2 Lite as a backup. Uh, keep in mind, parameters don't add with consoles, so if we had just a light, we would need the NPU. So that's kind of what this is for. If, for whatever reason, the full size uh, decided to not start one day and we had to break out the light, um, we would not have enough parameters with the light, um, so we would need to throw this into session. It's in session now anyways, uh, but it's also useful if we come across house rigs that have a lot of fixtures, um, like uh, Rebel in Toronto, for example. They have a lot of fixtures there, requires a lot of parameters. So this is kind of our insurance policy um, so that we can, we can do a show to its full extent in any venue that we go into. Now, the NPU is actually not doing any sort of data distribution whatsoever. The data distribution is being handled by our Pathport Octos. Um, we're right at 16 universes with the whole rig. Um, uh, so we have two active Pathports and one backup uh, Pathport Octo um, over our fiber line that is run from front of house over to our fiber ghost switch, which is chilling. Where is it? Right here, right on top is our ghost switch. They moved it on us. Um, and then that distributes MA net uh, and streaming ACN to the nodes in NPU. Um, so I mentioned we have 16 universes. Uh, they're not full universes. They are kind of split up and spread out how it makes sense to distribute them. Each individual tower is one universe. Uh, the whole upstage wall is one universe. And then uh, if we move along to our last little element that I want to talk about, we have this monstrous ground row of fixtures and LED. Um, originally, these were going to be uh, hidden behind an entire wall of vanish tiles. I ended up not going with that and decided to do this kind of nested style where the lights are kind of hid in defilade below the first row and then can kind of give a cool 3D effect to the visuals. So keeping with the rest of the theme of infrastructure on the show, we're using Tyler GT Green Truss. Uh, that's what GT stands for if you didn't know, it's Green Truss. Um, and these are eight foot sections. So the towers are 10 foots. The ground rows are eight foots, and each has four mega points and four Ayrton Magic Panel 602s mounted on them. Now, one thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about the JDCs, uh, all of the pixel mappable fixtures on this rig, except for the spiders, um, can take input from the Resolume composition and control the pixels that way through Resolume. It's only in certain elements of certain tracks where we use that. Uh, for example, here's the, the intro visual, and you can see the JDCs uh, are flickering along with the correct colors scaled to the entire stage. Uh, the same is true with the magic panels. Now, I didn't get fancy enough to where I could track in, in 3D space where the pixels are as they're moving, but uh, it, it's close enough using them in their like default straight out position. So 12 mega points, 12 Ayrton magic panel 602s, six Roby Spiders, 36 Elation Darts 360s, 12 GLP JDC1s, and four Portman Hexaline strips. I think that's it. In addition to our lighting and video elements, we also brought along six Lightspace 22 watt RGB laser projectors. And these were provided by Laser Wolf and our very own Laser Poppy Parker Shore. Uh, was in charge of programming them and making them look awesome every single night. Now these were played back with the Grandma 2 as well uh, using Artnet, but uh, all of the hard work and programming done by Parker is done in Pangolin Beyond. And we didn't stop there with lasers, we also brought along nine laser bars. They each have eight diodes, full RGB control. Uh, and they're mounted on our downstage truss facing straight down, um, which, as you can see Parker here, uh, he's aligning the lasers. It can be kind of annoying, but the effect is really cool.
Also on that downstage truss, we have 16 uh, RGBW kinetic moving spheres. Um, you can run effects on these, you can program them just like any other effect you would program or create static scenes, really whatever you want to do. It really provides an extra layer of depth to the show. Um, we have no dedicated front light on the tour. We're pretty much reliant on whatever is uh, in the venues that we go to. We're in House of Blues today and they have a, a pretty wonderful house rig. Uh, it's been looking great the last two nights and I'm sure we're gonna have another great night tonight. Oh, last thing, almost forgot to mention it. Uh, this is my favorite part about the rig uh, and that would be these custom, uh, custom made copies <laughs> of the original like uh, Ayrton mirror panel. Um, when these came out, they had an option to be purchased with a mirror kit that went on the back. Uh, we couldn't find anywhere that had them. Uh, so LMG was kind enough to fabricate this. Uh, uh, it's, it's like a plexi backed with a, uh, a mirrored coating. So the, the mirror is actually on the back side and then the front is a plexi uh, plastic type material. So there's a couple moments in the show where we use these to reflect the projected uh, light from the mega points. Uh, it's just kind of a, a cool little secondary effect that, uh, that we can reveal as the show goes on. So yeah, that is my rig review for the Lewis the Child Here For Now, Here For Now lighting rig. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to hit like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions at all, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.